again. Welcome into LAFC Black and Gold. I am Max Bredos, and these two gentlemen are some of the guys you will you'll hear their voices asking the tough questions. I ask the softball questions generally at, after the games. These guys bring in a lot of times. It's Ryan Wallison of The Athletic, Alex Dwyer, who covers uh, LAFC for Major League Soccer. Hello, gentlemen. How's it going? We, we, we see here a fair lot. And um, speaking of questions, Ryan, and you, you really bring it with some of these questions sometimes, and I know you asked about the issue certainly with LAFC late in games, uh, it hurt them again against New England. But this is something that Bob has been preaching. This is they're going to get it right. But how have you viewed that through the scope of all these games we've seen? Well, you know, it's definitely an issue for the team. It's something that we've seen a couple of times. But it's a very difficult thing to kind of parse down to one or two issues. And Bob is always saying in post game, uh, it's not something that comes down to just the defensive line or just the keeper. It's a team mentality and it's about you know, team execution. Bob says that a lot of the chances that you know, become the goals that we're discussing start from a ball given away in the attack. It's about not getting that second goal or that third goal to put a margin wide enough so that that can't happen. Uh, kind of what you saw in Toronto where the team had a four nothing margin that, that ended four two, having four goals kind of nullifies that discussion. Yeah, you that can't have that all the time. Exactly. Alex, this is uh, certainly a growth, and the MLS season is forgiving in a lot of ways, but you can do it. But how have you seen this team going through the LAFC, uh, the uh, New England game, and how they have been able to work with different combinations of players? Yeah, I mean, a team like New England, I think there was close to 30 fouls in that game or something like that. You know, th there's teams that are throwing different things at them now. There's teams that have watched them, watched what they did early in the season, the goals that they've been able to score, um, and the new players that they've had to try to bring in. I think having them shifting personnel has been always will be a learning curve but for them they've had to do it quickly the playoffs are coming there's six more games left and you know i think in the end a point was probably fair last weekend but you know coming into this next game and the several that follow it's gonna have to be a little bit better from them and we're looking towards the playoff run here and the western conference can really flex out here. LAFC could be one, they could fall off the back end here. When you look at the teams that LAFC have to be leery about, when you see the whole landscape, what sticks out in these final six games? You know, LAFC have a really favorable schedule coming down the stretch on paper. You, know, you always have to throw that caveat in, but they're gonna be playing teams towards the bottom of their table. Only really Vancouver is fighting for a postseason spot and then the finale against Sporting Kansas City will, I think, be a battle for playoff positioning in the West. Yeah, and he and I were talking about it before. I mean, most of the teams in the West actually have tough schedules, the people in the playoff picture. Apart from LAFC, it's just Seattle that has, you know, teams, more teams that are on the lower, lower down on the table. But yeah, you, you would guess, as Bob Bradley told us earlier, you know, 60 points being a, a target for them, that it's going to be possible for them to get at least 13 points out of the next 18. All right, guys, it's one thing to make the postseason, another thing to uh, to get up to one of the spots that you would like to get. There's a lot of teams in the former where they're trying to get into the spots. And this is going to be fun watch. Hopefully it doesn't affect LAFC, but you have certainly in the Eastern Conference, you have Montreal and Philadelphia hanging on, DC United, Wayne Rooney, Toronto FC, those teams trying to get in. In the West, Vancouver's on the outside. I think Portland's probably safe now, and you also have the LA Galaxy trying to get in. When you see when it all firms up, how do you see, Alex, I'll talk to you, how do you see it all wrapping up? DC United, I, I, I don't know whether it's the fact that they have, I think, four or five of their last games are home games, they just have one more away game. They play Chicago twice, um, who's at the bottom of their conference. And a couple of the other games are definitely places where they can get points. I see them, I see them getting in. On the Western side, um, you know, it's Salt Lake, Vancouver, those two both have pretty difficult s schedules. I would say Salt Lake's is slightly harder. I could see Vancouver getting more points uh, down the stretch and getting into the playoffs. I don't think that the Galaxy are gonna gonna be able to overcome the the task at hand. Um, they think I think it would have to be perfect they at would, this point. They could not. I don't think they can drop another point and realistically still be buying for the postseason. Do you like DC in the East? Uh, I as, do. Like Alex does. You I do. Uh, spades on both conferences. Um, I think that DC is the team based on all of those home games, based on the fact that you know they're trending well right now. Obviously, we just saw a little bit of them in terms of getting points staying on that road and then in the west we, honestly the biggest thing for me that has me favoring vancouver in terms of the team to come out in that sixth spot is the fact that they're seventh right now but have a game in hand and schedules um, i think that 
if they can take a pair of business in their final six. The Galaxy, as I said, uh, they have some tough opponents and they drop even a point, uh, certainly three points, and I see them as falling out of the race. See, I want to talk about that stash because it's been one of the good luck charms, but I won't. <laughs> but Alex, these guys are great. Check them out at the stadium anytime here at the Performance Center. I know you guys had a chance to talk to Bob. We will hear from Bob Bradley when we return here on LAFC Black and Gold. Welcome back to LAFC Black and Gold. Here we are with Bob Bradley. And Bob, uh, preparations now turn to San Jose. And interesting circumstance for this team. They have an interim coach, Steve Ralston, coming off a midweek game, which they a lot of controversy. We won't get into that. But how do you prepare for a team where there are so many unknown things? There are, is this a, certainly a little more different than most? Oh, whenever there's a coaching change, uh, you expect uh, fresh energy. And I think everybody saw that early in the game against uh, Atlanta. Uh, players seemed free. Uh, there was a lot of good football. They scored some really good goals. Uh, does it make them a little more dangerous because of the circumstances that you may not? This is this has been a wild card of a team. They've been the worst team in the league, but it's a wild card because what you may not be able to prepare for. Well, you have to prepare for the fact that there's some good players, you know, that they're still a team capable of playing good football, as we saw probably for 60 minutes uh, against Atlanta. Uh, they've got. Uh, some very good passers. So, you know, the, the idea for us is to understand the opponent, understand how they play, and then try to take our football qualities and, and make sure they're at the highest level. Anything hangover from that game that you had with them where you won 4-3 in the meeting up there in Northern California? I don't think so. That was, that was during a period in and around the World Cup. Yep. Uh, for us, it was uh, a game that ended in a perfect way, but I don't think we, we played our best football. So uh, that seems a long time ago, and now we've got uh, more recent experiences to draw upon as we get uh, ready for this team. Tyler Miller, uh, player of the week, can't, again, he does it, and he's been pulling it together, made some key saves, certainly against the revolution. His development, where it's at, and where you see that ceiling for Tyler? Oh, it's been uh, fantastic to see his improvement. Um, Zach Abdel gets a lot of credit. His work with young goalkeepers over the years, uh, Kevin Hartman, Matt Reeves, Brad Guzan, and now we throw Tyler Miller uh, into that category. Uh, and so in recent weeks, uh, has made some really good saves, continues to get better with his feet, uh, a lot of confidence. So uh, we're, we're very excited to, to see how Tyler keeps moving along. It's, it's been great to see how the fans have taken him, really become a fan favorite, certainly because of those uh, incredible saves he's made. The striker situation, Marco Odenia gets his goal. Uh, Chris Ramirez, Dio, Dio not practicing, but uh, when you see these guys and the run-in, how important is it to have all three ready to go? Uh, it's great that we've got competition with our strikers. Uh, actually, Dio is back in training okay. this week. Uh, so, you know, each one has uh, a little different uh, way of going about things, but uh, we're excited to keep pushing them forward. Uh, uh, Marco's has given good efforts, his mobility, stretches defenses, Christian settling in, um, his ability in the box. And then Dio is, is still with his combination of uh, movement and power, finishing, uh, someone who's scored some great goals for us. All right, we're excited to see what happens. Uh, big game against San Jose. We'll see you there, Bob. As always, thanks for your time. Much more LAFC Black and Gold after this.
Welcome back to LAFC Black and Gold. The guys are wrapping up the uh, staff game. We're going to get a little closer look at that in future episodes, so certainly stay tuned for that. San Jose is the next opponent here at Bank of California Stadium. The guys will be going off on the road after two games, so get your tails out to Bank of California Stadium for this one. In fact, I'm going to help you with it. I have two pairs of two tickets. All you need to do is answer our trivia question. Send your answers to my Twitter handle, mbredos ESPN, and I'll sort you out. First two people to get this question right. The question is, Stephen Betashore used to play with the Earthquakes. What round, what year, what pick was he drafted by the Earthquakes? You give me those three answers to that question. You'll get two tickets to the game on Saturday and be prompt. The game is not that far away. All right, Stephen Betashore is from California, so he's not very far away from home, but some of the players on LAFC call home a lot farther away, and that includes Latif Blessing, his mother, his sister, are in Ghana, and while he is in LA, he's thinking about them a lot. We had this very special feature that aired on YouTube TV that gets a closer look at Latif and his love for his family and his village. Ghana is a very good country, you know, to be there, you know, you can walk and do everything. Like beach, it's a good culture, you know, like we love each other, you know. That's why people just love Ghana, you know. When you get to Accra, maybe uh, you drive maybe one, I think one hour to, uh, to my village, a small village. It's not many people, you know, just small village, you know. When I was start growing in Nankesi, like poor family, you know. My mom is so special to me, so I just love my mom. When I was young, that's what my mom do, just so rice. Took care of uh, me and my sister, you know, just took care of us to school, to maybe give us anything we want, you know, so I just love, that's why I love my mom so much, you know, so anything my mom just need, I need to get for my mom. Why your mama bampa say me bring on twins when you nan so you hear school ba gaba ko we so be call us we so be call us offer in your friendship in ta phone so i was say we be call school ni di me ti me fa ba ko nya ba ko papa nya me bo a me ma me do won ko she school ti school ni ba e mi bia ti ka so your mama ba in no cry because <laughs> No one's buy me boot, my mom buy me boot all the time, you know, so like, that's why I just love my mom so much. So I need to get more money so that I will take good care of my mom. When I sleep, I think I'm a mom. When I wake up, my mom. Mommy, share Latin for me, you know. And you're my yummy dear. My friend won't cast her over. Same quality, you know, you share one thing, you go to school. You won't be, I mean, you'll be my partner with you. So, when you have a damn, when you have a shell, we are you know, we are not to say this is me doing coins. No coins, when you meet Jina Mechi, my me doing cotton. Tell me, don't you mean I say, say one ma, me bre, and you quack. I was my mom who and I started playing football, you know. God created me to come and play football, you know. Like when I was young, I started playing. People would say, hey, you're special, you know. When I when I was a little young, I played so good. Uh Nemofrance. I mean, top born in Brennan and the Sadani, the old Miffy. And Mammy, who say, our future say, obey a big time footballer. 
by then na yewo class 6 e na unya omo nominating me for milo milo competition bi wo eastern region it is that time no na offer best player and na me be hu say me nwa no he has the future and the effort to be a big time footballer in the whole world high school championship i win uh, best player go king have a lot of stuff you know like medal golden boot and my friend just told me hey like you need to work hard you know uh, we don't have any star in this village you will be the star so like you need to work hard and i said okay i'm going to do my best to maybe make a star so right now hey everybody was happy for me to be a star you know so sometimes when i score go everybody was happy in that village In Temua, Cromwen, say, eh, you see, I need footballer one and can say, a young crop for the ye. Mom for so Cobobol and I saw Bobol is saying, or she go off. I know me, I mean, my man, a Dagina, Mom for to meet two milk. Ever bomb my man, yes, eh, a banache. See, my amid day. Rumu hafunya blessing ba hasi siya. Ye kese ye inya mo so enko nya wa ha. Eti kroni mani nina obia ye proud se ode huwa huwa nwa ye obia huwa huwa obia fele proud se blessing ye den efini kroni. So blessing is very important to this village. After the season, my boot I use, the players' boot they use. Like I just talk to maybe the staffs. Hey, I need that boot. You have to give it to me so that when I go to my town, I just give it to anyone. So like everyone is wearing new boot. You know the pitch we play on it, it's bad, it's so so bad. So like when I have money one day, I just say hey, you know, when you pay for me to make big money, you know I'm gonna make something special for you guys so that I put my name on it. So be like. A tea blessing page, you know, that's, people will be happy for me. So I just thought, hey, just pray for me. So, okay, we're gonna pray for you. We know, we believe you, you're gonna do it. So, like, one day, I prefer one day I'm gonna do that for them. We're here with Latif Blessing. We saw the uh, piece together, your reaction when you, when you see your, your mother, your sister, your village. Uh, no, I'm, I'm so sad right now. I saw my mom just crying, you know, I'm so sad, you know. Um, one thing, you know, about my village, I need to work hard, you know, for maybe a big something for my village, you know, that's what I'm talking about. You see my village, you see where I'm coming from, it's poor, you know, so I have to work hard. I have to look back. When you look back, that's why you need to work hard. When you look back and say, hey, you have nobody, so you have to work hard, so. You feel that, you feel that pressure? Yeah, so for come back, pressure, you want yeah. to go back to the village and provide new yeah, boots or new yeah, fields. Yeah, yeah, so that maybe people are happy for me, you know. Like uh, when I have match, they just call me like, we just pray for you, like, hey, this time we're not going to score goal, we're going to score goal, so I'm so happy. So like uh, when I just returned back last season, I uh, just when they are playing high school game, so they see me, all of them, they're happy to see me, like, hey, welcome, welcome, so come and say something for the kids for maybe they look after you to maybe be a great player one day. They look to you. Yeah. Okay. So I just go to them, I talk to them, I have to be humble, respectful, you know, do everything, become and be a great player more than me. So I just promise them, like, when you pray for me to make big player in one future, like, I'm going to build this park for you. Then next future, this park will be glass. Everybody will be happy playing this glass. So you got to pray for me. So everybody was clapping, you know, exciting for me. So I just promised them, like, uh, I have to do it. So that's why I need to work hard anytime I'm in training, I'm somewhere, I just pray for maybe big somewhere, like, to be like something special for my country, you know? When, like, when you have your family, uh, when you're in a new place, yeah. you need something to fill that void. Yeah. So how's, how's uh, LAFC been able to do that? I just, I just love it. Like, I just see this video, I'm so happy. Like, when people see it, they will be happy. Like people just say, hey, the video is not out yet. Like say you have to wait. Like you're gonna come. So my my home my home time just like my friend just WhatsApp me. Hey, the video is not yet in. I say just wait. Like it's gonna now they come. Can see it. Yeah, now they can see it. 
So other than them, they'll be happy to say, you know. So me too, I'm happy. Now I'm, I'm sad, but I'm happy. After the season, I just talked to maybe uh, Scotty to give me like. Give that help. Yeah. So I just talked to them all already. So he said, like, if after the season, you're gonna give you like the boot and uh, the LFC jersey. Like LFC is gonna give you. Yeah. For everyone in the village. Yeah, everyone in the village. So everyone who wear LFC, LFC. Gonna that's be, great. Yeah, that's <laughs> well, great. <laughs> but Latif, you know everyone here loves you. Yeah, the fans know, love you and uh, everybody. Latif. You know, like, you know, one thing I do, you know, you have to, fans will make you great. The fans will make you great. It's not you. It's not about your playing. But fans will make you great. So you have to maybe appreciate it with fans. After the game, you have to take pictures with them, dance with them, you know. They will make you great. Like, they will, Latif, Latif, Latif. So there you go, folks. Uh, and a beloved member of this, this community and everything that you do helps engineer him and it it's passed forward. So, Latif, thanks. It was great to share that with you. Thank you. Uh, getting all emotional here in the LAC Black and Gold, but we'll see you next time. Make sure you get out to San Jose. Make sure to, uh, to tweet me any of the answers for our trivia, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you, Latif. Yeah. <laughs>